with our ears as animals, for example. And then Ramus digastricus. Here it is. Ramus digastricus. For musculus digastricus and musculus tilia hiatus. Then Ramus temporalis. Ramus zygomaticus. Then Ramus buccalis. Then Ramus marginalis mandibuli. And then Ramus colli. So this schematic representation of fascial nerve branching will help us to understand that most part of fascial nerve is motor nerve and only two very important but small branches of it Nervus horda tympani, nervus petrolus maior. They are parasympathetic and also sensoric branches. Okay. And do you understand all these branches in detail? If yes, try to control yourself. Here it is, picture from uh, textbook of Lippert, very good uh, German textbook. You can find it in uh, internet. All this nurse we already have demonstrated and now try to distinguish each of it and now I can show you the right answers also use a button of pause during uh, looking the this video and we shall use these uh, pictures in our tests. So, try to test yourself. And uh, then, very important question according the paralysis. Pelsy. So named Bell's Pelsy. Bell's palsy is a lesion of seventh cranial nerve which occurs at the beyond the stylomastoid foramen. What can we find in this situation? First of all, characteristic indication of Bell's palsy include the following on the affected side. Affected side in this picture is right side. Left side is healthy, but right side is affected. In affected side we can find marked facial asymmetry. Then atrophy of the facial muscles, then eyeball drops, compare left eyeball and right eyebrow, right eyebrow drops, then you can find 
smoothing out of forehead and nasolabial fold. But forehead, it's difficult to see here, but nasolabial fold on the right and on the left side are quite difficult and uh, different. Smoothing of nasolabial fold. Then drooping of the mouth corner. You can see from the left side it's moved up, but from the right side it's drooping. Then it isn't seen here, but it's very often take place on contralaterium lacrimation and loss of efferent limb of conjunctival reflex. That means person cannot close eyes from affected side. Now for demonstration this position I use another example. Here it is. This is left side is affected. On the down picture, uh, person tries to close the eyes, but on the affected side, it's impossible. He cannot close left eye. So we can also see that lips cannot be held tightly together or pursued. It tries, but it's difficult. And difficultly keeping food in mouth while showing on the affected side. So you can see that this anatomical material which we study now helps us to understand the pathological situation to make a diagnosis this quite characteristic features can help us make a diagnosis of Bell's palsy. So, thank you. Uh, lecture is over.